Previously on the Rod Peterson Show. That's right. So here's my take on the on the Edmonton Oilers, okay? And it's really not that hard to figure out. I think part of the reason with Oilers fans is that they are right in the middle of the forest and they cannot see the trees. Yeah. And I read a really good article, by the way, on the Oilers' struggles, if you will, in the Edmonton Journal about how they've got nine players over the age of 30. Um, Ken Holland, way back in the springtime, said this is the way I'm constructing the team. If you look at the teams that win the Stanley Cup every year, there's a lot of guys with gray in their beard. It was a direct quote from from Ken Holland, the general manager of the Oilers. They're still coming together. It's not even Christmas yet. I know we've passed U.S. Thanksgiving, but I think the Oilers are a lot like the Dallas Cowboys, my Dallas Cowboys. We know they're good enough. We know they're going to be in the playoffs. Let's just fine-tune Let's tinker and stay healthy more than anything because let's remember that Mike Smith is still not playing. Number one problem with the orders is goaltending, and that's not the goals against stat. That's just goaltending overall. Again, the other night against Minnesota, they were down 111 into the game. Notice what I did there, Moose? 111. The Wild opened the scoring. Miko Koskinen's got to pull his head out of his ass. But at this point, he's not pulling his head out of his ass because he can't. So you all think that Mike Smith is going to be the next Grand Fuhrer? I say, I say good on you, but they augmented the roster with, obviously, Duncan Keith and Cody Cece and Zach Hyman. It's a good team. Just because they've lost three in a row doesn't mean you're going to flush the whole season down the damn toilet. Get ready for the Rod Peterson Show. I'm always habitually astounded by the interest people show in the Arizona Coyote situation. I'm just stunned. The Coyotes sending out a statement Wednesday night. We have already launched an investigation to determine how this could have happened. But it appears to be the result of an unfortunate human error. Could this actually happen with a pro team? Yes, it could. Yes, they could be that stupid. Or they could think that you're that stupid. This is human error. What do you mean? This is the Rod Peterson Show. <clears throat> it sure is. Howdy do, everybody. Welcome to uh, Daytime Sports Talk. We are on the air on the Game Plus Television Network, live streaming on YouTube, and uh, 24-7 Listen Live Sports Radio at rodpeterson.com. Boy, uh, the people are into it already. Welcome to your favorite uh, Daytime Sports Talk show. Phone smoking here. Just before we went to air, I got, the, I got the poll tweeted. And although it is a... Although it is a... Flame Tech Football Friday. It's a hockey question today. Just just under the wire, Park and I were going over what should we tweet today. And I, I always like to uh, do the Jedi mind trick on you. And although it's Football Friday, I'm like, let's go with a hockey question. So right out of the gate, the Capital Automall Universal Collision Center poll question is this. Do the Edmonton Oilers need a shakeup? And right out of the gate. Have we even been on the air a minute? 75% of respondents say no, the Edmonton Oilers do not need a shakeup despite their fourth consecutive loss on Thursday night. So uh, while we broadcast from gorgeous South Florida, let's bring in the other half of the show, the lovely and talented Ted Lasso lookalike. He is in the NHL's Bermuda Triangle in the bunker and ta-da! How about that? <laughs> when did oh, you do no. that? <laughs> Last night. Last what? night. Yeah. I already had a Zoom call with you this morning. I didn't even notice. Were you wearing glasses and a mustache disguise? <laughs> no, I wasn't, but I did it last night. It's funny. Uh, yeah, so I just, I just, I decided, you know what? I was trimming it up last night, and I didn't like the way I trimmed it up. I'm like, you know what? You just did it. Well, so here we are. Good to see you. You Thank look you. very mature. There's something, there's something different about you. You look lighter. How heavy was that mustache? I know, right? It was about three <laughs> pounds. Um, hey, listen, it is a Flame Tech Football Friday coming up on the program today. Eddie Steele of Sportsnet's CFL coverage, our longtime friend, Grey Cup champion. He'll be with us in hour one. 
in hour two because Moose has to adjourn for a very important meeting. We'll be joined from, by the sports doctor from Winnipeg. He can always talk uh, Jets, Blue Bombers, and Vikings because he is a season ticket holder of the, uh, the Purple. And James Duffy will be with us as well. He is the host of TSN's Great Cup coverage, and you've been watching him hosting the panel from the West Division playoff games the last couple of weeks. Uh, and let's not belabor it any longer. Let's jump into the uh, quick six show topics, please. If you don't mind, Director Jordan, it's a, it's a hot, hot topic. And, of course, because it is a Flame Tech football Friday, the balance of the show is going to be football, obviously. But I got some hockey topics I want to get to. James Duffy is also the host of the NHL Insider Trading and all the rest. So we'll get into some hockey with Duffy. But I notice Nelson, our VP of Sim Events, Nelson Hakowicz writing in, and he says, the CFL State of the League had great promise today. The partnership and potential with Genius Sports is huge. The fact the CFL restricted itself and started a venture group shows that work has been done. That is like mumbo-jumbo and gibberish to a lot of our viewers, what Nelson just said. And so that's my first point. I'm going to spend a just very brief topic, a minute on this topic, which is the CFL State of the League address at Grey Cup this morning. Then I'll move on to hockey. And then we'll come back in the second segment, Darren, and spend more time on what the commissioner had to say. Yeah. I'm glad that Nelson was very excited about the Canadian Football League's new partnership with Genius Sports. From what I could tell, I'd never heard of it until this morning. It's some sort of content delivery platform. That's what it sounds like to me. And I'm glad that Nelson's excited because I did not watch the State of the Union this morning. I had another meeting that I was attending uh, here in Florida. And so I followed Arash Madani's Twitter feed. And if you're looking for positivity with regards to the CFL, don't follow Arash's Twitter feed because I, I feel like what Nelson was watching and what Arash were watching was two completely different things. Because following what Arash was tweeting out of that commissioner's State of the Union address was a whole lot of nothing other than saying we've fixed the business model, we're open to change. Ambrosi met with the fans apparently afterwards and said, ah, hey, we'd love to have a video game, but it's not a priority right now, which is what we hear every year. I don't hear much different coming out of what the Ambrosi said this morning other than we're open to change, which they have said for quite some time, and also that we've fixed the business model. So... That was my take on that. I, I didn't I didn't come away with the positivity that Nelson did. Moving on to point two, okay? The NHL's Board of Governors meetings are here in South Florida, and the NHL announced on Thursday an enhanced training program for employees at its Board of Governors meetings after an investigation uncovered disturbing details of sexual abuse endured by Chicago Blackhawks prospect Kyle Beach more than a decade ago. Commissioner Gary Bettman said the board will discuss the Olympics and the Arizona Coyotes' outstanding debts with the city of Glendale today at the meetings in Malapalan? It's not where I am. They normally meet here. They're not. They're 23K south. I looked it up, Moose, where they're okay. at. Um, this Arizona Coyotes' outstanding debt situation seems to be an evolving story because by late Thursday, the owners wrote a check to the city of Glendale, and then we found out that they owe more money in other places around the Valley of Arizona. So they're discussing that today, and boy, would I love to be a fly on the wall of that meeting, the NHL's Board of Governors. How are we going to handle this Arizona situation? My, I think they should jersey the owner. Smart enough. <laughs> Pay your bills. That's what I think. That, that's the old-fashioned way, but I don't know that they do that anymore. And the board voted unanimously to approve Fenway Sports Group's purchase of a controlling interest in the Pittsburgh Penguins. So out of all those notes out of the NHL Board of Governors, and before I move on to Thursday night's NHL highlights, highlight games, do you have anything that you'd like to add, Moose? Do the owners have their own mafia, you know, in a back alley somewhere oh, with the club, and it's probably raining, you know, um, oh, where, yeah. they can, where they can take, you know, owners that are misbehaving and feed them a little beating and get them straightened out. Um, we'll see. So the way they used to handle it. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see where this comes out. With, with the Coyote situation, because that's kind of imminent if they're talking about December 20th as a deadline. Um, we will find out more about that. The Olympics is interesting, too. Will they send the players over, um, you know, amidst, you know, varying concerns and that type of thing with COVID and, and whatever else? That'll be kind of interesting to see if that comes down. The the policy on the, on the harassment, the 90-minute training 
video, I believe, that they're working with uh, Sheldon Kennedy's team to put together. I think that's really awesome. I think that's good. You know, I, I've seen the social media comments scoffing at it, being like, this is going to be nothing more than, you know, a training video at McDonald's. You think they're actually paying attention to those 17-year-old kids before they run the fryer? Probably not, you know, but... It's a good step, and it's a start, and it's, it's everything you need to do. You need to address it and put some actual policy in place. Words aren't enough. So I think that's all really, really, really good stuff. Uh, for sure. But as a guy that works in that industry, uh, and I'm talking about the recovery industry, uh, it's from the NHL side, hey, we'll put out the training video. Whether you pay attention or not is on you, but we've yeah. done our part. That's kind of what it comes down to, right? Yeah. If they didn't pay attention to the training video that we put them in front of, that's their problem, not ours. We're covered. That's what I take out of that. Yeah. The games, point three, Mark andre Fleury has joined some elite goaltending company. He turned aside 27 shots for his 500th career win as the visiting Chicago Blackhawks posted a 2 nothing victory in Montreal. Only Marty Brodeur and Patrick Waugh have reached that milestone. Interesting, all three goalies are from Quebec. The Calgary Flames lead atop the Pacific Division is down to a single point after a 2-1 overtime loss to Carolina, coupled with Anaheim's 2-1 win over Columbus. Sebastian Aho scored both goals for the Hurricanes. By the way, who said that the Ducks were going to be something? This guy. And it's interesting because Jeff Kozak, good friend of mine, I was surfing Facebook this morning. He says, uh, note to self and to all who needs to hear it, don't go into the saddle dome and cheer for Carolina. And I'm thinking, come on, Jeff, you're smarter than that. Don't go into any venue and cheer for the other team. Come on, you're just asking for problems. And here's my question to the viewers here right now, because we are the most interactive sports talk show in the world. That's a fact. What is your experience with going into the opposition venue? And obviously, I've got a million professionally going in with my, te my teams to work, but going in as a fan... When I was a Dallas Stars fan, when my dad was working for them for 26 years, I was a staunch Dallas Stars fan. Staunch. I had every jersey. I went to their games in the Bermuda Triangle when they were the road team. And one night in Edmonton, uh, we, of course, Stars were good. Oilers weren't. Right? So the yeah. Stars are winning, and I'm standing up <sighs> in Rexall. And people are like, ah, sit down, you loser. But nobody really, nobody really threw anything at me or was that rude. But then I was with my good friend, Chris Winkler, in between periods, and I was still drinking back then, and I spilled beer down myself, all over my jersey, underneath. And some water fans just walked by, and they said, serve you right. I think somebody might have bumped me. That's what I think happened, Darren. I can't yeah. remember. It was foggy that night. <laughs> but, um, but I knew going into Edmonton wearing a Stars jersey that I would be like a fish swimming upstream, and I relished it. Yeah. You know, I, I still kind of do in some regards. <laughs> Not as much as I used to, but do you have an incident where you went in cheering for the road team and of course. got a hostile welcome? Where? Um, well, I always would make the trip to Edmonton um, as a Leaf fan. So I've done that for, you know, two or three years now. I haven't done it the last, obviously, the pandemic, but um, that's been my experience. And that's pretty heated because that Edmonton-Toronto thing is really heated. Toronto's kind of, you know, always been... We talked about the networks having lots of Leafs coverage and all of this, but then the Oilers have been good with McDavid and whatnot. So, but when I go into opposition rinks, I'm not the guy who wears the jersey and the hat and the scarf and the foam finger as an opposition. I'll go really subtle when I'm going into a visiting building. If I was going into, you know, um, Scotiabank Arena, I'd, I'd wear the jersey, but I'd wear maybe, you know, a, a, a sweater with the, with the one logo, or I just wear a hat. I, I kind of keep it subtle and simple. I still cheer for the team, have a good time. And I've had no issues. It's been, an, it's been fun. Well, and I see from our uh, viewers, they've got some comments. Randolph in Ontario says, how about cheering for the visiting team in your own home stadium? I don't know why you would do that. That's giving me a headache. I don't understand. I don't know why you would do that. Jeff, the Stamps fan, says going into a visiting stadium is never a problem unless you are asking for it, at least in Canada. Um, yeah, so I, that's what I want to hear. Like, why would you cheer for the visiting team in your own stadium? I, I guess that it, it happens. I would like to hear from those people. I would guess that would be something along the lines of if you're a Montreal Canadiens fan living in Edmonton. So you go into Edmonton, that's where you live. But as a Montreal Canadiens fan, your stadium would be the Bell Center, wouldn't it? 
Yeah. It's just weird. Yeah. I, be, I mean, I know of Calgary Stampeders fans that live in the sweat, sweatpants capital and have gone to Calgary at Saskatchewan games and gotten a rude welcome. Some have gotten beaten up in the bathroom. But I've often said, don't wear a red jersey in here. Well, what are, you, what, what are you thinking? That's just dumb. You're asking for it if you do that. I was asking for it in Edmonton, but I knew that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You get what you get. Um, Janice, watching on YouTube, says, I'm a Stamps fan who holds Elks season tickets. I wear red and white to every game and cheer for the Stamps when they're in town. I'm prepared. Friendly taunts and be respective. Edmonton, I've, I've often found they are a very welcoming community sports-wise. Even when I went in there with the Rough Riders working, I've, I've often said to you, Darren, how first class we were treated by the Eskimos, yeah. by the fans. That's an Edmonton thing. Um, where the heck is it? Uh, Carlos Legena watching in Indianapolis says, I've cheered for the away team a number of times. There was some moderate ribbing, but nothing I couldn't handle. And Jordan watching on YouTube regarding the orders uh, says the orders need to go and get Fleury, Marc-Andre Fleury. Start with Broberg and go from there. That's the poll question today. Do the Edmonton Oilers need a shakeup? Last I looked, 25% of respondents on Twitter saying, no, they don't need a shakeup. And I don't think they need a shakeup either. I, I'm not a proponent of them needing a shakeup. But one thing I've noticed is the orders have lost four in a row. I follow a lot of Oilers fans on Twitter, and they're not even saying anything. I feel like they're they're so stunned and on pins and needles right now. They don't know what to say. That's yeah. the sense that I get. Yep. So there's that. So I've gone through Thursday. Listen, it's all going to be all football next segment, so I want to read this before we go to break. Elsewhere last night, Winnipeg Jets beat Seattle 3-0. If you've noticed, all is good in Jets land now. They're all happy in Manitoba today. Holy, up and down like the toilet seat. And the Oilers, have, I, as I said, have lost four in a row after a 3-2 defeat to visiting Boston. And by the way, if they do need a shakeup, I'm saying, I mean, goaltending, clearly they don't think they need one. They just think they need Mike Smith to get healthy. Go get Jake DeBrusque if you need a shakeup. He wants out of Boston, which means the Bruins' leverage is down. Jake's an Edmonton kid. Bob's your uncle. And the other thing on the goaltending situation, by the way, they lost the goaltending battle last night. The Oilers fired 43 shots at the Boston net and couldn't win. Chris Jones. Chris, write this down, Moose. And all of you that want a little lesson in sports, Chris Jones said, when you're building a pro team, you want your players, the, the meat of the roster, to be in their mid to late 20s. Now, he said pro football, but I think it translates to any pro league. Do you know why he says mid to late 20s, Darren? Any why? idea? Why? Because old guys get hurt and young guys make stupid mistakes. Rookies and guys in their first year contracts, first contracts make dumb mistakes. The guys in their late 20s, are, they don't get hurt, and they're smart enough. They've been through the rookie mistakes. So think about that for a second. Mike Smith is hurt, as is Duncan Keith. Selection camp for the Canadian junior men's hockey team opened Thursday in Calgary, minus four players, including one who will not participate in the upcoming tournament. Defenseman Jack Thompson of the Sudbury Wolves was among 35 players initially invited to Calgary, but was uninvited by Hockey Canada because of COVID-19 protocols. University of Michigan forward Kent Johnson's arrival was delayed because of COVID-19 issues as well. He'll join the Canadian team for pre-competition camp next week in Banff. Hockey Canada needed both Thompson of Curtis, Ontario, and Johnson of Fort Moody, B.C. to quarantine for 14 days before joining the team. Peterborough Pete's forward Mason McTavish and Charlottetown Islanders defenseman Lucas Cormier didn't skate Thursday. McTavish awaited the results of a COVID test and Cormier's flight to Calgary was delayed. Both players are expected on the ice today in Calgary. Canada opens the 10-country World Junior Men's Tournament in Edmonton and Red Deer on Boxing Day against the Czech Republic at Rogers Place. The medal games will also be played there on January 5th. This has been the warm-up. When we come back, NFL Thursday nighter and loads and loads and loads of Grey Cup 108 talk. So stick around. We'll be right back. This has been the warm up. You're watching the RP show daytime sports talk on the Game Plus television network, YouTube live streaming and 24 hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson show now. 
you gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Bronco Plumbing, Heating and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. yards in a single pro football game. A legend wins three Grey Cup MVP awards. Allen looking deep. A legend scores 1,209 points in 1,127 NHL games. Play among legends at betregal.net. You might not be injured if you slip and fall or you might sprain your wrist or even fracture it. A severe wrist fracture can take at least two months to heal properly. And it can cause you to develop arthritis that keeps you from doing something as simple as picking up your child without pain. Slips, trips, and falls can have a lifetime impact. Take safer steps with worksafesask.ca. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. Hey, Rod Squad, now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show, official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. It's the RP Show daytime sports talk at its finest. It really is. And ball for all now, as promised. As promised, we bring the moose in here. Look, I got so many things going on. You have no idea. I'll just tell you that it is Flame Tech Football Fridays brought to you by Flame Tech, locally owned and operated industry leaders in commercial and industrial combustion technology. Shout out to our dude Denton from Flame Tech, who loves his ball and sponsors these Flame Tech Football Fridays every week. And of course, we're brought to you by Tough Tribe for Men. Contains aloe vera, botanicals, and antioxidants traditionally known for their scalp and hair benefits. We love our men. Welcome to the Tough Tribe, available today at toughtribeformen.com, Amazon Canada, and coming soon to a salon near you. Remember it, Tough Tribe. Just to give you an idea, Darren, a college scout has DM'd me, and I'm not, I'm not going to give you his name That'll remain private, but he's like, good day, Rod, but on the road recruiting. He says, what's your predictions on Sunday's game? 
getting in a workout before the recruits get to campus. I'll be listening. Been told next week to expect a lot of shakeups in the CFL. We will see, I guess. And that's from a guy here in the States. But everybody's following the CFL very closely. And uh, by the way, we'll get to the Thursday night NFL game, plus your NFL picks for the weekend before this break is uh, this section's over. Okay. So note to the guys in the back to have that ready. All right. But so the coach is listening. If for anybody, if for anything else, we got the coach listening here in the States. And, uh, and I know there's a lot of people hanging on this flame tech football Friday talk. So the commissioner of the CFL spoke this morning. And to be honest, great timing. I went into uh, Twitter in the break. The article's up at three down nation.com right now from Justin Dunk about what the commissioner had to say this morning. I don't know if you saw it in the break or not, but if you didn't, I'll cover it. Randy Ambrosi saying that the owners have agreed to revenue sharing for the first time in 40 years uh, and keeping in full mind. I didn't watch the Ambrosi news conference this morning, but I followed Arash's Twitter, which was frankly probably more entertaining. In that article, okay, Darren, and I listen closely because I want your take on this too. Ambrosi said the owners have committed to holding each other accountable. Two days in a row where I'm going to say, <laughs> you're going to now hold each other accountable? Now? He says, frankly, they've come through COVID with a fixed business model that's going to fix the uh, foundation of the league, a very, very strong foundation for the CFL moving forward. And let me just say this. There's no reason to expect the CFL is going to die. They've made it through COVID. So why would we think they would die now? Ambrosi did say that they're open to change, but I don't believe that they are. I don't believe that they're open to change. Nope. Never have been. So why would they be now? And I think... I love the game. I mean, there was some talk about scoring being down and the pace of the game. And Randy said they would look at the CFL games. Fine. It's, it's always been fine. What have I said for years? The CFL knows football. They don't know, obviously, business and marketing. <laughs> That's football's fine. Coaches are great. Players are great. That's not an issue. But, you know, the sports betting. There was a few reporters that held Ambrosi's feet to the fire this morning at the State of the Union saying, where's the, where's the money going to come from betting? And Randy allegedly said, uh, it's not all about the money. It's about fan engagement. And I don't think that was the plan going in. That's not the way they talked initially. So I guess my summation of it all is I've been to 20 CFL State of the League addresses by six different commissioners. And I'm tired of we're going to do this and we're going to do that. I'm about ready to see some results. Yeah. Not not we're gonna do this, we're gonna do I'm tired of we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna. I'm tired of it. So until I see some results, uh, I'm I'm not, I'm not buying much of what Randy Ambrosi said today. And I'm a Randy Ambrosi fan. And furthermore, that coach said hearing rumblings of big changes across the CFL next week. And Darren, don't be that guy. You heard those rumblings too, because you told me. Of course. You know, and, and it's important <clears throat> to understand that change is coming, you know, and, and when you feel change coming, change always happens after a season's over too. Coaches start moving around, things start happening, but this feels a little bigger than that. You know, it feels like, you know, that the change is going to be more substantial. And this is coming from people that I trust um, really explicitly. Um <sighs> When you feel change coming and you feel a little bit of heat, whether that's on the ownership groups, whether Randy's feeling some heat, whatever, you want to reassure people that everything's going to be okay so that they don't panic and they don't make changes and nothing crazy happens. So you want to re reassure people that everything's going to be okay. Now, everything you said sounds good. If the business model's fixed and it's a rock-solid foundation for the future, cool. And I know words are words, and I talk a lot. I talk a, game, a big game, sure you know, in certain things. But what does that mean? We have a rock solid foundation. You know, have you cleaned? Have you changed something as the budget's been changed? Have you altered your, your strategy and your business model? I'd like some specifics on what that means so that we can get excited uh, on how we're going to move forward. You know, I also wonder 
how are you going to keep all these ownership groups and all the different owners accountable? How are we going to hold them accountable? Are we going to start having fines for You're them? Not. You You're know, not. and for what? And for what behavior? What's the problematic behavior? Nothing specific. So, you know, and I know it was for the fans and you want to put the fans in a good mood and keep them positive. And we're getting going to be entering season ticket renewal phase here coming up early in the new year. And we want the fans feeling good so that they trust the league and want to spend the money. And so those are all things I would expect to be said. But is there going to be action behind it? That's the question. From the viewers, Janice in Edmonton says longtime fans are also tired of the same story year after year in the state of the league address. We want more. Mike Horrigan in Toronto says Ambrosi rarely says anything, in my opinion, like he speaks, but no information is revealed. From Carlos in Indianapolis, I doubt Ambrosi was going to give a doom and gloom state of the league address. No, he doesn't. Christine, my cousin Christine in Medicine Hat, says the Riders made a large donation to the community. They must be in pretty good shape. <sighs> Chris, I'm sure they're rolling in dough. They must be. They have to be. Chris in King City, Ontario, says the CFL is a collection of little empires. That kind of thinking has to change. Earl James on YouTube. Ambrosi congratulated himself mostly by the sounds of it. So, uh... <laughs> Earl James says, reading Madani's tweets about Ambrosi's presser doesn't fill me with confidence. To the viewer that said he's not going to give a doom and gloom press conference. No, but in 2019, 2018, Edmonton Grey Cup, I was there. And Randy, actually, I was sitting in the front row, and he specifically signaled me out. He's like, I was talking to Rod in the lobby, and I would said, and this is true. Uh, he goes, we're heading into some stormy waters here. This was 2018. Nobody saw COVID coming. Right. We got a lot of problems here. That was the day they announced the Global Initiative 2.0. So I guess as we sit here today, the league is still operating. That is the, that's the plus. But other things that came out of the news conference this morning with the commissioner, the salary cap's not going up. Salaries aren't going up. Ambrosi was asked, is this inane coaches and staff cap going to be disbanded? Didn't give an answer on that. So... You're a business owner, Darren. Maybe maybe you think that's a good thing, the uh, cap and restrictions on coaching and football operations staff. I, I, I don't know. Well, I don't know. You and I talked, and we talk, a lot. we talk a lot about the business of this show. We follow other programs. We follow what's going on in Canada, what's going on in the U.S. We look around. We see what people are doing successfully. We see what people aren't. Everybody has a different, you know, um, approach to business, too. Some are really conservative and just want, you know, to make a little, spend a little, make a little more, spend a little, and, and live within their means and do really great. Others have more risk, and they want to spend, 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 and have the huge, huge payoff at the end. We talked about that even this morning, you know, in our conversations. Um, so the coach's cap, do I like it? It's responsible. If you only want to be here, if you want to be up here, then you have to do certain things and act like you want to be up here, which might mean being willing to take some losses for a longer period of time and have the stomach for the road, that bumpy road to get there. It's not easy, but all the great ones can take that. You know, um, I look at the NFL has done that over the years early on. I look at what Jerry Jones did in Dallas or Vince McMahon with the WWF, now the WWE, right? All these, these leaders that have gone through rocky roads to get where they are. Um, is the CFL willing to do that? Are they willing to continue to deal with losses to operate as a league that can get up to here? Or is it about controlling expenses, getting everything in order, and just having a league that lives right here? Yeah, uh, that's the thing. We all watch, pray for the best. Games are on TV. Things must be awesome. Uh, the CFL will hand out its awards for the 2021 season tonight in Hamilton. Montreal running back William Stanback and Winnipeg quarterback Zach Caleros are the finalists for the league's Outstanding Player Award. Calgary's John Cornish was the last running back to win the award in 2013, if you remember the MVP. To the NFL in the time we have left in this segment. Uh, Thursday nighter, the Minnesota Vikings held on to beat the Pittsburgh Steelers 36-28 by forcing an incomplete pass in the end zone on the final play. Ben Roethlisberger's throw to Pat Fryamuth was on target, but Anthony Barr and Harrison Smith 
sandwiched the rookie tight end at just the right moment to dislodge the ball. Chase Claypool, the sophomore from Coquitlam, B.C., roasted by analysts, including Ryan Clark on ESPN this morning, for getting up and celebrating a first down on the drive. Took five seconds off the clock. Claypool blamed his teammate. Figure that one out. A lot of drama on Thursday Night Football. Looking ahead to the rest of Week 14, Darren, you've got your picks for BetRegal.net plus the prop bet of the week from Nelson Vo, our content creator. What do you got this weekend for NFL picks? Well, first, are we going to show George Yanitsis at Thursday Night Football? I love that you got that on, the, uh, on our Instagram story. I don't think the guys pulled it from Instagram. We didn't prep them for this. But um, Georgie from the Four Seasons in his... Vikings Tucon right behind Michael Irvin at his head poke it out and then he was messaging on Twitter this morning because I feel for Vikings fans man the stress they got to deal with okay picks time um, I could go back and forth on a couple of these but let's start in Tampa at home against the struggling Buffalo Bills just three points right now I would take Tampa to cover the spread. It's just a field goal. I think Tom has figured out that Gronk is back. His safety blanket is there. So I will take uh, Tampa to cover that um, by just three points. Now, Baltimore at, if you're giving me points for the Baltimore Ravens going into Cleveland, I'm going to take that on the road plus two and a half. I think, you know, you look at coaching And Harbaugh is one of the best in the National Football League. Now coming off a loss, I think they're going to be extra focused and motivated. They let that game slip away last week against Pittsburgh. Lamar Jackson um, is still finding his way, but they're up and down. So they were down last week. They'll be up this week on the road against a struggling Cleveland Browns team. And this is the one I could go back and forth on. I picked San Francisco minus a point and a half on the road. Jimmy Garoppolo has had a really good season. And they're a good football team that just can't get out of their own way. The game against Seattle, I, I don't get it. They, they played a pretty decent football game, I thought, overall, but just couldn't find a way to win key mistakes. San Fran's good. They're on the road against Cincinnati, who, who took a beating last week against the Chargers. Now, two things to watch for Cincinnati as you get towards Sunday. Joe Burrow's questionable, and so is Joe Mixon, the running back, with the neck injury. So watch for those. If those two can play or can't play, that'll determine, you know, maybe where you, where you decide to bet. But as of today, I'm going with San Francisco. Uh, and Nelson's prop bet of the week, I don't see it. Oh, I think you got to scroll up. There we go. Tyree Kill, over 77 and a half receiving yards against Vegas. Kansas is a 10-point favorite in that game. So Tyree Kill expecting to have a breakout game. Nice job, Moose. Make your bets for free at betregal.net. Click on Play Free Sportsbook. Your duties are done for the day. Have a great weekend, sir. We'll see you Monday. Hey, sounds good. Thank you. Grey Cup champion and Sportsnet analyst Eddie Steele joins us next from the 108th Grey Cup in Hamilton. You're watching the RP Show. Daytime sports talk on Game Plus Television, YouTube live streaming, and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain from PO creation to expediting your shipments all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. This holiday season, wish your way at Capital GMC. Unwrap a completely customized vehicle ordering experience. Reserve a pre-ordered unit that's already on its way. Or get into a GM certified pre-owned vehicle that's on the lot and ready to roll. And don't forget, we pay big for your used vehicle, even if you don't buy from us. 
Plus, our service department is your winter headquarters. Get special pricing on name brand tires, storage, maintenance, and more. And we always offer free vehicle pickup and delivery. This holiday season, wish your way at Capital GMC. Comfort has always been something we, as people, strive for. It means that the places we live and work, and that the people we care most about, are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. Our focus at Flame Tech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. Addiction. It destroys relationships, families, and lives. It makes individuals and the people who love them feel powerless. But the good news is that addiction is a treatable illness. At Aurora Recovery Center, we provide everything you need to build a solid foundation for your recovery with holistic evidence-based treatment tailored to each individual. Located in Gimli, Manitoba on the shores of Lake Winnipeg, Aurora can help regardless of whether or not you feel ready or have tried before. Aurora Recovery Center. Recovery for life. Visit auroracoverycenter.com for more information today. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with The Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and The Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. It's the RP Show. Daytime sports talk coming at you on Game Plus Television, live across all 10 provinces and 31 states, streaming on YouTube and listen live at rodpeterson.com. Eddie Steele is a longtime friend of ours, nine-year CFL veteran, Grey Cup champion. He is now on Team Sportsnet, and he joins us from the Hammer 108th Grey Cup. We got so much to unpack with Eddie. He's looking fresh. What's going on? You got a job interview this afternoon, Eddie? What's with the suit? <laughs> you, know, you know how it is, man. I gotta gotta put my best foot forward when I'm on the big screen. Oh, good for you. Okay, so before we get into how this all came about, what's your report from Great Cup, man? How you feeling? What's what's the vibe? It's uh, it's been pretty awesome, uh, and you know it's pretty neat to be on this side of things. I've played in a Great Cup, uh, and I've actually gone to a couple Great Cups as a fan, but then. To be on the, on the media side of things, it's pretty neat to see how things work and how they they operate. Um, you know, it's it's been an exciting week. Uh, both teams uh, pretty fired up, saying and doing all the right things. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to Sunday. It's going to be a heck of a matchup. So I'm really excited for it. Well, listen, before we go any further, the viewers all want to know how this came about. For those that don't know, you were a Edmonton radio analyst there, made some th said some things the team didn't like, you were let go, and with it, was it just last week you were named to the Sportsnet crew? <laughs> what happened in between? Uh, you know, uh, I'm very fortunate. Just the opportunity came about. Uh, Arash Madani, him and I have a, a little bit of a relationship prior to us doing our work together here. And uh, he had reached out in the past. It had been uh, Trevor Lule who was doing uh, the uh, the gig here with him. And uh, tr uh, Trevor was uh, down in the States. And, uh, or sorry, Travis, my mistake. He's down in the States and he wasn't able to, to make it up. And uh, he reached out and uh, yeah, it was a pretty awesome opportunity. And I feel very fortunate and very blessed that the opportunity came my way. And it just goes to show you that um, even during some some bad times like what happened with the firing from uh, Chad uh, another opportunity presents itself so you can't stay down on the bad times and uh, you just got to keep persevering yeah good for you Eddie well I'm proud of you man and everything does happen for a reason and I also knew that you knew that it was Travis Lule because you chased him around for years so anyways um <laughs> about the 
matchup. I guess I'll ask you now your prediction. Like, what are you going to be watching for Sunday? And then how do you think it's going to unfold? The biggest thing is this game is going to be won and lost in the trenches. We all know what Winnipeg does and their strength, and they're not going to try and shy away from it. They want to run the ball and be physical with their offensive line. So it's going to be up to Hamilton to try and nullify that. And they're going to have to, it's really going to be bully ball. And you're going to have to show up with your big boy pads on. And you're going to have to try and, for lack of a better term, punch them in the face because that's what Winnipeg is trying to do to you. So you want to be the hammer, not the nail, as the old football coaches would say. And if you can stop Winnipeg from getting into second and short positions, because that's where they make their bread, they get uh, you know some pretty good production and first down with Andrew Harris. Say he runs a six, seven, eight yard run. Well, then Winnipeg has so much options. They can either hand the ball off again. They can go play action. Um, and then as a defensive coach and a player, you start to overthink things because Winnipeg has you right where they want you. Because say it's second and two, and you're preparing for a play action or another run. Well, then Winnipeg can surprise you and they can take a deep shot. And that's exactly how their offense works. And they don't go away from it. They, I love it, actually, because they have this mentality like, we're going to do what we do, <clears throat> and it's up to you to try and stop us. And they don't try and change anything. So, yeah, that's, that's really where the game is going to be won and losses in the trenches. And Hamilton's defensive line, they really have to show up and they have to, to have a big game. Um, one thing that I did notice at practice today and uh, I saw someone tweet out about it too. Uh, Ted Laurent wasn't out on the field, and I don't know where he was. And someone I saw on Twitter, uh, something was up with his appendix. I, I have no idea what's going on, but he wasn't out. So that's a, a huge, huge key to Hamilton's defensive line. One sec, bro. I got oh, someone got knocking on right. the door behind me. One I was Someone's knocking on my door behind me. Go One ahead. Sec. Go ahead. Can I get five minutes? No, please leave the camera on. Let's see. Can I just get five minutes? Yeah, yeah. Thanks. I'm on pins and needles. <laughs> just say, Live TV. I just need some towels. I When we're good. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm at the TV, stadium, exactly. actually. I had to sneak, sneak into a, a, an office here at the stadium. Ooh, okay, well, I appreciate you extra much, Eddie. Listen, our exclusive betting partner, Bet Regal, has the Bombers favored by three. I got a question for you, because you've played in the Grey Cups and you've been through the wars. Do you think the Bombers survived their scare last week in the West Final, and they're going to come out and just smash Hamilton? Like, is this an easy prediction the Bombers are going to cover by three and win by way more than that? Or do you expect a tighter game? I expect a tighter game. Um, I think Ooh. having those errors in the last week's game against Saskatchewan, I think Winnipeg is going to focus on the details a little bit more and they're going to be prepared. But, you know, honestly, even like I just mentioned about Ted, I think it's going to be a tight game. And uh, my opinion, uh, and I know you're probably going to ask me, but I'm, I'm rolling with Hamilton. I, I think Hamilton's going to come out and I think, not only is the energy going to be there because it's a great cup at home and that is such a rarity to be able to do that, to play and to win it at home in front of your fan base, but it's a revenge game too because they played in the great cup in 2019, um, got smacked around pretty good. And I know that taste is still in the guy's mouths. So yeah, it's, it, I think Hamilton is really going to come out inspired and fired up and it's going to be a, a heck of a ball game. <laughs> Buddy, we could go on for an hour about this, but Winnipeg is the better team. So you think chip on the shoulder attitude can, can turn the tide is what you're telling me. Yeah, it, it certainly can. And we're not talking about a hockey series, a NBA playoff series where it's seven games. It's one game, winner take all. And you never know in football. That's the beautiful thing about football. Winnipeg, chances are they're not going to go out and have six turnovers, but what if they have three turnovers? Hamilton, they're paid to make plays as well, too. And they're no slouches. They're in the game for a reason. Didn't have a dominant season like Winnipeg, but these guys are in this game for a reason. And it's a one-game winner-take-all. And <laughs> that's the thing about football is you never know who shows up that day. Ooh, that's why we love it. Hey, what's the one thing about the media that you um, 
whether it's this role or at Chad, that you didn't expect and are enjoying the most? Honestly, the camaraderie um, amongst uh, their media members. I, I had no idea it was like that. Uh, from the players' point of view, I always thought it might be some something like kind of clicky and kind of catty amongst different guys because you're all trying to get content and you know write and make stories. Uh, but it, the guys have been really welcoming and um, they've been pretty accepting and open to me. And it's been nice just getting to meet and see people because uh, I. You know, being around as long as I had, you read the articles and you you know the names, but to actually, you know, put faces to the names and meet guys in person, it's been pretty interesting. So, yeah, it's been an awesome opportunity and experience. I hope it continues. Give my best to Arash. Enjoy the game, bud. Talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Have a good one. Enjoy Sports Florida. Ed, Eddie's, I am. Eddie Steele, great cup champion. Got a sports update and taco time viewer takeover coming up next. You're watching the RP show daytime sports talk on game plus television, YouTube live and 24 hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson show now. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. You might not be injured if you slip and fall, or you might hit your head. That could cause a traumatic brain injury that, depending on how severe it is, could take months to heal or leave you with long-term effects. Effects like getting debilitating headaches for the rest of your life. Slips, trips, and falls can have a lifetime impact. Take safer steps with WorksafeSask.ca. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. This holiday season, wish your way at Capital Ford Lincoln. Unwrap a completely customized vehicle ordering experience. Reserve a pre-ordered unit that's already on its way. Or get into a pre-owned vehicle that's on the lot and ready to roll. And don't forget, we pay big for your used vehicle, even if you don't buy from us. Plus, our service department is your winter headquarters. Get special pricing on name brand tires, storage, maintenance, and more. And we always offer free vehicle pickup and delivery. This holiday season, wish your way at Capital Ford Lincoln. In the heat of the summer, heat of the summer, the sound. It's a sound feel in the air. Yeah, it's the best thing anywhere. Just give me, 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 give me back my game. BetRegal.net, exclusive sports gaming partner of the CFL. Hey, Matt, how's it going? We have something really special. Holy, it's pretty impressive. 
Rod Squad. Now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show. Official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. It's the RP Show time for Taco Time Viewer Takeover. And just before we jump into that, a sports update. Alabama quarterback Bryce Young is the Associated Press College Football Player of the Year, giving the Crimson Tide their second consecutive winner. This is not the Heisman, by the way, but Bryce received 42 of 53 first place votes to easily finish ahead of Michigan defensive end Aiden Hutchinson for the award. Pittsburgh quarterback Kenny Pickett was third. Alabama linebacker Will Anderson Jr. was fourth, and OSU quarterback C.J. Stroud was fifth. Young, Hutchinson, Pickett, and Stroud are the finalists for the Heisman, which will be presented Saturday night in New York. A sophomore and first-year starter, Bryce Young passed for 4,322 yards and 43 touchdowns, leading the tide to the Southeastern Conference Championship and the number one seed in the college football playoff. They will face number four, Cincinnati, in the Cotton Bowl New Year's Eve. By the way, I was looking for tickets at the Orange for the Orange Bowl. Uh, Georgia, Michigan, starting at five hundred dollars. Starting at five hundred dollars U.S. for a nosebleeder at Hard Rock Stadium. Uh, the Vancouver Canucks will try to extend their win streak to three games tonight against the Winnipeg Jets. It's one of seven games on the NHL slate. The league's Board of Governors, meanwhile, continues to meet in Florida today. Plans for the 2022 Beijing Olympics are on today's agenda. So you're going to want to be following that. The Toronto Raptors are set to return to the NBA hard court tonight against New York one day after canceling a team president, uh, sorry, team practice. Team President Masai Ujiri announced Thursday night that he tested positive for COVID. Former NFL wide receiver Demarius Thomas is dead at age 33. Police near Atlanta say DT was found dead in his home last night. His family believes he died from a seizure. Foul play is not suspected. The sports update for Ballers Rec Room. Check out our brand new line of games. Book your group or business Christmas party now for the Tap Brew House and Drive Through Liquor Store, where you'll never need to ask to have the CFL game put on. And for Red Bull Canada, Red Bull gives you wings. To the text line, the 902 text line, we got a million here. Allie Hicks writes in. She says, happy CFL Grey Cup weekend, football Friday, everyone. I'm cheering for Hamilton, hoping they win it for their home crowd. Hope Tom Hanks, Martin Short, and their families will be there like they were in 2013 in SAS. She's watching from Hawaii. Mark Zosel from Melfort where they do the Melford shuffle. He writes in and he says, Randy Ambrosi says CFL owners agree to revenue sharing. Why should a community owned team in Saskatchewan share revenue with Toronto and Bell Media? Mark, I'm just going to let you get that off your chest. I'm not even going to explain it. Would it help to just say, because that's the way it is? Would it help? We'll get into that next hour with the sports doctor when he joins us. Ward in Winnipeg watching says, uh, one minute, last minute of play in hour one. I'm told. From Ward in Winnipeg, happy Friday, Rod and Moose. I get more enjoyment listening to a squirrel eat nuts than listening to the so-called CFL commissioner, Go Bombers. Grant in Kelowna says, now that Jim Rutherford's been announced as Vancouver's president, who should they look to and who is available to be a GM? Rutherford is the GM, right? Rutherford's going to be the GM. He says, also let Moose know I think the ladies might miss the mustache. And Craig in Calgary, regarding how you've been treated on the, as uh, if you cheer for the visiting team in a venue, he says, Craig in Calgary says, I've always been treated well as an opposing fan, even when I'm wearing a jersey, mainly because I'm not a jerk. I don't taunt or cheer too loudly beyond some clapping. There you go. There's the how to to go into a visitor's arena and not get beat up. Sports Doctor and James Duffy next hour coming up here on Game Plus TV. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Hey, Don. Hey, Quinn. We have a surprise for you. Oh, my. <laughs> 
This holiday season, wish your way at Capital GMC. Unwrap a completely customized vehicle ordering experience. Reserve a pre-ordered unit that's already on its way. Or get into a GM certified pre-owned vehicle that's on the lot and ready to roll. And don't forget, we pay big for your used vehicle, even if you don't buy from us. Plus, our service department is your winter headquarters. Get special pricing on name brand tires, storage, maintenance, and more. And we always offer free vehicle pickup and delivery. This holiday season, wish your way at Capital GMC. Comfort has always been something we, as people, strive for. It means that the places we live and work, and that the people we care most about, are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. Our focus at Flame Tech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. A legend throws 713 yards in a single pro football game. A legend wins three Grey Cup MVP awards. Allen looking deep. A legend scores 1,209 points in 1,127 NHL games. Play among legends at betregal.net. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. A Landmark Cinema's $30 gift card with $40 in great movie savings is the perfect gift to give or give to yourself. Get yours today in theater or online at LandmarkCinemas.com and make it a merry movie season. Landmark Cinemas for movie lovers. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Hey, Matt, how's it going? We have something really special. Holy, it's pretty impressive. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. I'm always habitually astounded by the interest people show in the Arizona Coyote situation. I'm just stunned. The Coyote's sending out a statement Wednesday night. We have already launched an investigation to determine how this could have happened. But it appears to be the result of an unfortunate human error. Could this actually happen with a pro team? Yes, it could. Yes, they could be that stupid. Or they could think that you're that stupid. This is human error. What do you mean? This is the Rod Peterson Show. Hello, one and all. Welcome to the Sunshine State. It's hour two of the RP Show, which is always brought to you by Original 16 Beer, Great Western's Original 16, brewed in Saskatchewan, made with premium Saskatchewan ingredients. Original 16 is unfiltered for peak flavor. And I might add that I'm feeling charitable because it is a Flame Tech Football Friday. We're doing Taco Time viewer takeover through the whole show. Did you know the Taco Time? has been around for 40 years in Canada. This iconic brand and a Canadian favorite serves over 3.2 million burritos, 2.5 million tacos, and over 1 million Mexi fries every year. Later on this hour, we will award the comment of the week from you viewers. Brought to you by Taco Time. $50 gift card going out to uh, the best comment of the week. Uh, listen, breaking news. I told you we'd be doing a lot more college football talk. Michigan's Jim Harbaugh, ring the bell, is the Associated Press College Football Coach of the Year after leading the Wolverines to their first Big Ten title in 17 years and a berth in the college football playoff. 
Harbaugh's the first Michigan coach to win the AP Coach of the Year Award presented by Regions Bank ever. And the first from the Big Ten since Joe Paterno back in 2005. But it is Grey Cup weekend. And listen, let's get him on the screen, please. The sports doctor, Dave Patrician. David, there's nobody else I'd rather speak with than you on a variety of topics. Hey, the Vikings won last night. You're a, a Viking season ticket holder. The Jets won last night. The Bombers are in the Grey Cup. Are you the happiest guy in the world today? It's like hog heaven. I think I'm going to get a soft meat burrito from taco time for sure because that, <laughs> it, was a, it was a great sports day. Uh, it, it's been, you know, the, there's been the Winnipeg Jets. There's been some bumps along the way. And the Minnesota Vikings, you know, it's uh, nice to see a victory in a national audience. But uh, the focus in Manitoba is on the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And, you know, back in, um, I think, uh, hour one, you were talking about uh, going into opposing stadiums or arenas and, and uh, you know, Dupe said, that, you know, same thing. He doesn't like acting like a jerk. I've never acted like a jerk in a lot of stadiums until some of the beer kicks in. But there's been some real hostile Grey Cups I've been at that weren't even in there. Like we're talking about Montreal in 2001, uh, mm -hmm. Toronto in 2007 when we played the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, and there must have been 56,000 people and 55,000 of them were wearing green. And everywhere you went, every every saloon that you walked into, everybody was wearing green. Um, and of course, last year was a little friendlier, being, or sorry, two years ago was a little friendlier in Calgary um, because it was probably three quarters Winnipeg Blue Bomber fans and then maybe a smattering of Ticat fans and then this you, your usual array of the guy with the, the George Reed Saskatchewan uh, jersey with 500 buttons dating back to when, uh, when um, John called uh, games back in 1912. So. Yeah. Hey, I got to ask you, Dave, before we go any further, well, well, a couple of things. Listen, you're, I, you're gracious enough to stay with us for two segments, and I appreciate that because Ryan Gregory's written on YouTube and says, what's your take on the NHL not wanting to send the players to the Olympics now? And I appreciate that. Ryan, just hang with us, okay? For this reason, it's Flame Tech Football Friday. Randy Ambrosi just addressed the media this morning at the Grey Cup. We got a lot to unpack on the CFL. That is Grey Cup weekend, so if you can just hold on to your bingo cards, we'll get to the fact that here in South Florida, the NHL Board of Governors this morning have decided they don't want to send the players to the Olympics. So just hang on, man. Things are moving at breakneck pace. But, Dave, as far as the Grey Cup itself, you and I have been to like literally dozens of them. Um, what mm -hmm. led to your decision to not go? Because I recognize you are in your kitchen. You are not at <laughs> the Grey Cup. You know, it's funny, Ron. Uh, someone asked me that the other day, and, and I think it was a whole bunch of different factors. I mean, I was booked um, for Saskatchewan uh, last year and for, for the 2020 than the one that was postponed. And I think it was a factor of the late season uh, the uncertainty of what kind of events, uncertainty what the crowds would be, that I just, I completely neglected um, of booking myself a trip. And, and it was, as it got closer and closer, I'm going to be really honest, it got more expensive and more expensive. And um, if I'm going to the Grey Cup, I'm going to tell you this right now, I booked um, my room for Regina for the 2022 Grey Cup already. So I'm already booked in advance. Um, but... This one, you know, it's not a normal Grey Cup. Now, I've been getting the FaceTime messages and the text messages and the photos from Dr. Hands and all kinds of things, and you know who I'm talking about, um, yep. that there is some events going on, but it's not your full-scale Grey Cup. And uh, I want to go to a full-scale Grey Cup, and it's going to be a little strange because I have not watched the Blue Bobbers um, on television in the Grey Cup since I think the uh, 1992 or something like that. That was the last time I probably missed the Bombers in a Grey Cup. So, but you know what? I was, at the, I was in attendance on uh, Sunday at IG Field. And, um, you know, when you beat Saskatchewan, that's kind of like your Grey Cup too. Yeah, hey, sprinkling sports talk as we go. That's what's fun about what we do. And thanks for the plug, by the way, telling all your Manitoba followers that we are on Game Plus Television Live, which carried, <laughs> is carried on Bell MTS Cable. More news coming out of the Gary Bettman Board of Governors meetings in South Florida today. The, he has said, Bettman, that the Coyotes are staying put. Any relocation rumors are false. Now, back to the CFL, and because you cover the NHL too for the Manitoba Post, we'll get around to all this stuff. I'm just... Sprinkling in the news as we go, David. Ambrosi this morning, 
an original Winnipegger, mm -hmm. commissioner of the CFL. I'm not sure how closely you follow what he said, but these, these are the highlights of his State of the League address this morning at Grey Cup at Hamilton. They are committed to revenue sharing. They say for the first time in 40 years. I got thoughts on that. He says the owners are going to hold themselves accountable. I don't believe it. They never have. Why would they start now? And out of the whole thing, and I'm on record as saying I'm an Ambrosi fan, talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. So I don't believe much of what I heard. He says they fixed the business model. We'll see. But he would not address if the salary cap's going to go up. He did not address if the coach's salary cap and staff restriction is going to go away. Said sports betting isn't about the money revenue, it's about fan engagement. And they announced this partnership with Genius Sports, which from what I can gather is a sports content distribution platform that will ease in betting information with the CFL. That's a lot of what I got out of the news conference this morning. How much were you following it? And what were your takeaways from what you heard, Dave? Well, exactly what you said. Um, the fan engagement piece is huge. Um, and that sponsorship uh, is very important to the league because they've lost generations and generations of fans, whether it be because they're playing NFL on their, on their, on their PlayStations, uh, whether it's because uh, the older, maybe the, the people that are above 21 years old are betting on, uh, on National Football League games and through uh, sports select tickets, and that's bigger and bigger. But, you know, there's a whole generation of, um, of young fans and new Canadians that need to get engaged in the game. So as much as you, as you need to keep the older fans going to the game and keeping the older fans engaged with the proper football on the field and, and proper run organizations, um, I'm looking at you, Edmonton Elks, but you have to get, you have to track the new people. And we've seen the influence of soccer um, throughout Canada. And that is, a, and I never want to throw around new Canadians because we're all Canadians. It's all about engaging the fans and bringing them back and turning on new fans to the products, whether you're a Canadian, whether you're born here, or maybe you came here or you're not first generation. If you have a good product, exciting product, and the fans are coming to it and the stadiums are full and the stadiums are full of energy. It doesn't matter where you were born. You want to be part of that fun. So I believe that the CFL's key to success is making the game experience fun. Now I'm going to give some props to Wade Miller. Now I know that yeah. I've been critical, critical of him in the past um, just because, you know, it, it just, he just, he seems to rub people the wrong way. And I was sitting back and I was remember on the plane back, and I saw Wade Miller at uh, the 2019 Grey Cup. And there's a guy that basically turned the team's fortunes around, made the game day experience real good, and then won a Grey Cup. So he had all the components. He put it all in place. It's fun to go to a Winnipeg Blue Bombers football game, as it is in Saskatchewan. It's fun to go uh, at Mosaic Stadium. But it's not so much fun to go at BMO in Toronto. It's not so much fun to go in Edmonton or in BC. It's not. They need to figure that piece out. And whether it would be, like, and, and I'm not just saying it has to be um, uh, beer gardens and tomfoolery and shenanigans. It's got to be engaging. You saw in Calgary, the Grey Cup, all the, fan, the family-friendly activities that were going outside uh, the Roundup Center. There was stuff for the kids to do, and there, it was fun. It was fun for the whole family. That's the kind of things they need to do. They need to bring people back in. You turn the little ones. You get them excited about it, then they say, Dad, Mom, take me to the game. And that's where it starts. So, and, and once you get that excitement into the stadiums, and it's, and it's all about it. Look at some of the excitement you've seen um, in, uh, in, in National Hockey League buildings. Look at almost every NFL game that's maybe not in Jacksonville. Like, you know, every, 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 it's fun to go. It's engaging. There's stuff to do. It's a day activity. And there's a lot of buildings in the CFL that don't provide that. Hey, isn't this fun, David, that we got more time? Normally we're oh, rushed, right? This is awesome. So I appreciate you saying for the extended time. From Free Oleg on Winni uh, from Winnipeg watching, he goes, that's the first I've heard that Wade Miller rubs people the wrong way. <laughs> Can we get a put him bump <laughs> He's got to be joking, right? Everybody feels that way about Wade. But Dave, you also know what I think about Wade Miller, the president of the Blue Bombers, and I love him and he rubs people the wrong way because he's a no BS guy. He tells you yeah. what he's thinking. 
whether he's right or not, he's honest and people don't like it. And I know a little bit about that. Anyways, I think Wade's the greatest. <laughs> and, uh, and again, uh, he's the reigning uh, Great Cup champion president in the CFL. So that's kind of fun. Um, the, ex- the excitement that he's created on game day has been second to none. And, it's, and you know, um, 25 years ago, uh, the game day experience was just go to the game, get as drunk as you can, and hope your team wins, right? But it's way more different than that now. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different financial things. There's commercials on the big screen. There's sponsorship plugs. Um, but and, and, and it, so, so that's taken a little bit away from on-field. So you've got to make that, that, that you've got to create that excitement. Winning football creates a lot of excitement, too. You don't have a lot of winning teams struggling at the gate, uh, other than maybe this year, with, well, all the time with Toronto. But it's, it's all about keeping them in. Prices have, since I started to go to Blue Bomber games, have probably gone up five times what they were. You know, the, you know, it's expensive now to go to a pro sporting event, so you got to give value for the money. And Wade Miller has provided that in Winnipeg. Hey, by the way, so Mark Zosol watching in Melford says, well, Rod, you were right. The Coyotes check was in the mail. Bettman said the taxes debt has been paid today. That's why I watch, as Rod knows what's going on. Craig Warden watching on YouTube says, just like Super Bowl week, put out all the fun stuff outside and free for fans and kids. Also move the season up so it's not freezing outside when the kids attend. From Craig Campbell watching from the Hockey Hall of Fame in Toronto, he says the pregame and postgame barbecue at an Argos game is unmatched by other sports locally, but attracting newer and younger fans requires more pizzazz, certainly in Toronto. Uh, on that Winnipeg thing, I do got to say this, Dave. You've been around this league longer than I have. I've got, let's just say, former team presidents and chairmen calling me regularly wanting to know. And when I was in Winnipeg, and I was with you there in August, remember we yep. went to the Bomber game, and that was the, you know, that was the COVID uh, pass. You had to, at the door to get in. Very slick, no waiting, got in. I had a president, former president, call me, Dave, and you can attest to this that it's true. He goes, what, what's going on there in Winnipeg? What's with the buzz? What's Wade done? And I said, I don't know, but the word in Winnipeg was you need to be at the game 45 minutes before kickoff because it's $3 beers, $3 hot dogs and burgers and blah, blah. So the stadium was packed 45 minutes before kickoff. And the former president's like, man, Wade's got it going on. Was that his idea? I'm like, I don't know. Nothing's original in this business, but they're doing it. Like Dave, the Bombers really deserve a big pat on the back for what they do. Do you feel like they get it? Because I don't. Uh, no, I, I don't think they get it. I don't think, um, you know, you, you're talking about what came out of the, the thing, revenue sharing. And, and you know, in, yeah. instead of, of talking about revenue sharing and things like that, why aren't they doing things like, you know, having the, and you know, maybe they do behind closed doors, but have Wade Miller speaking to the other owners and going, this is what you knew. Here's the blueprint. It's easy, right? Engage. And, and I don't know that um, it's the same in, uh, in, in the same demographic of a fan. Like, you know, we've had such great success with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, um, you know, we, we had that drought. But you talk about the number of Grey Cups that they've won and the great teams they've had. I'm particularly thinking about the 80s, the amount of Grey Cup appearances. So the football has always been solid. And, of course, it took that big dip when they first got into Investors Group Field. And that's when Wade Miller stepped in. And that's when Kyle Walter stepped in. And everybody believed in Mike O'Shea. And uh, they held with it, right? Everybody's looking for a quick solution and uh, a quick fix whether it be, you know, um, you know, free popcorn tonight or maybe something like that or firing the coach and firing the GM and getting rid of the, getting rid of the radio announcers and, you know, just that general uh, chaos that went on in Edmonton this year. And it's, it's, it's just the fans get upset. Chaos breeds more chaos. Until you calm things down like Wade Miller did, you're not going to have a success. You're not going to have a success on the field or putting people to watch your product. David, you're dropping a lot of knowledge today, man. I love it. It's a Flame Tech Football Friday brought to you by our friends at Flame Tech, locally owned and operated industry leaders in commercial and industrial combustion technology. We'll talk more Grey Cup and CFL stuff, plus NHL, because David is on the Jets scene. There's a lot coming out of South Florida in the NHL Board of Governors meetings. We'll unpack all of that. We'll... uh we have James Duffy coming up as well from the CFL on TSN panel. We're going to give away our comment of the week uh, award for taco time. So stick around. We'll be right back. You're watching the RP show daytime sports talk on game plus television, YouTube live and 24 hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. 
Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You gotta subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. I started the Shot Lacrosse Academy three years ago, um, and my main goal for the province of Saskatchewan was to spread the game and the awareness of lacrosse. Jeff Shatler here, number 77 with the Saskatchewan Rush. I currently play forward, 16 years pro. I live, work, and play in the province of Saskatchewan. Direct West mission is to grow Saskatchewan economy by helping small local businesses win with digital advertising services. But they are also a major supporter of local sport, art, and charitable organizations. Year after year, Direct West continues to put their money where their mouth is and ensuring the minor sports and art and music festivals can continue to thrive in our province. They continue to do all they can to promote our communities and assist nonprofit charitable organizations in the effort to improve the quality of life in the province of Saskatchewan. I'm proud to work with Direct West and call the province of Saskatchewan my home. Bronco Plumbing, Heating and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating and Cooling. We'll treat you right. You might not be injured if you slip and fall, or you might hit your head. That could cause a traumatic brain injury that, depending on how severe it is, could take months to heal or leave you with long-term effects. Effects like getting debilitating headaches for the rest of your life. Slips, trips, and falls can have a lifetime impact. Take safer steps with WorksafeSask.ca. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. This holiday season, wish your way at Capital Ford Lincoln. Unwrap a completely customized vehicle ordering experience. Reserve a pre-ordered unit that's already on its way. Or get into a pre-owned vehicle that's on the lot and ready to roll. And don't forget, we pay big for your used vehicle, even if you don't buy from us. Plus, our service department is your winter headquarters. Get special pricing on name brand tires, storage, maintenance, and more. And we always offer free vehicle pickup and delivery. This holiday season, wish your way at Capital Ford Lincoln. Hey, Rod Squad. Now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show. Official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. The RP Show continues on a Flame Tech Football Friday. We are live on Game Plus Television live streaming on youtube and we go 24 hours rodpeterson.com slash listen live you can listen all weekend long to our football talk in advance of the 108th great cup i am going to open it up to viewer comments here and there are a ton as we continue to go with our guest the sports doctor dave patrician um i wanted to read this david uh, this is the one thing that came out of ambrosi's news conference this morning the state of the league this is how he opened. Commissioner Randy Ambrosi unveiled the CFL's new partnership with Genius Sports in his first State of the League address in two years. Ambrosi told reporters the long-term partnership would accelerate league growth and broaden its reach in existing and new markets. However, Ambrosi would not divulge specific details of the agreement. He also said the COVID-19 pandemic, which cost the CFL the 2020 season, has forced the league to revamp its business model, including the adoption of revenue sharing among the nine franchises. 
So we do have NHL talk coming up. I've delved a little more into this Vancouver Canucks GM search situation. I thought Jim Rutherford was going to be the GM, but apparently no. He's the acting GM, and he's going to find somebody else. So that's coming up in moments. But the CFL Players Association is holding their State of the Union address this afternoon, Dave. What, what do you think will come out of that from the Players Union at Great Cup? <laughs> Well, first of all, the um, players' luncheon, there's an open bar, so there might be a brouhaha afterwards. I was, this was uh, FaceTime with Miles Grell just before we went on, so it, uh, it should. I, I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm glad they just got to the point of going to the Grey Cup. Um, I, I'm glad that so many people have done the right thing, and, and I'm talking about players that uh, have become vaccinated. Only one member of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers couldn't travel uh, to Hamilton. I am, um, I am a little puzzled about, uh, I thought the rule was if you couldn't travel with the team, um, by, you know, you shouldn't. So to me, Hamilton should, if they're unvaccinated players, should be disqualified from participating too. You know, what happened if they, if it was, um, if they had to play in Montreal, if it was roles were reversed. So I don't think there should have been a loophole on that. But uh, players association-wise, of course, they're not going to be happy with the, um, um, no, the, the no increase to the salary cap of that what comes out of it. I don't know if they prorated this year or not. If uh, because it was a shortened season, did everybody have to take a bit of a haircut? I don't know. Um, and any time that you know, if this genius marketing partnership, if it creates revenue streams um, for the Canadian Football League, will that be shared with the players? This has to all come out um, in in time um, in the next couple of months to in order for the players to be happy, in my mind. Before we shift to hockey, because football is your number one sport, uh, what will you be watching for on Sunday? What do you think is going to happen? What's your prediction? How's it going to go down? Well, I'm pretty excited about this game. Um, you know, I, 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 there was a little bit of a speed bump last week against Saskatchewan because, you know, the, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, mm -hmm. uh, they, took a couple, they took a couple of weeks off. Um, with the last couple of games of the season, but they were forced to be reckoned with. Um, you know, I was on Toronto radio yesterday, and uh, I was going back and forth with a Hamilton fan, and I just said, "I just said, I'm just glad you you should be glad that this game is being played now because back in 2019, now that we're in a pandemic, in 2019, Hamilton couldn't catch anything, so it's kind of given a bit of a rib. So I, I think the Blue Bombers' defense is just tremendous." Um, they have Hamilton's number. We started the season um, in Winnipeg with a win against the Hamilton Ticats. Um, I, 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 just, I just don't see it there. I, and I know what Eddie Steele was saying, that he's going, is it going to be a hometown? But, you know, you take that crowd out of it. Like, look what happened last year, or two years ago, sorry, at McMahon Stadium, how the Bombers just came out. They, 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 they just were ferocious. And, or, and, sorry, Hamilton wasn't even in the game. Um, they, 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 they neutralized any weapon that Hamilton had, and I think they're going to do it again. I don't think home field advantage for a great couple play out in any way, shape, or form. The Bombers are largely intact from 2019. Um, you know, they're, they're going to be, there's going to be a ton of them named today, all-stars, or sorry, uh, players, uh, most valuable players, uh, when the awards get handed out. So the, 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 the Winnipeg Blue Bombers right now are just once, a uh, once-in-a-lifetime team. And uh, I'm hoping that, you know, the, the brain trust in Winnipeg can keep most of these guys together. But, you know, there's guys getting significantly older, like Andrew Harris, who is now 34. You know, maybe this could be his swan song. He's deal dealt with injuries all year long. Um, you know, like I said, the team has been together for a long, long time. And uh, sometimes guys retire, guys move on, and, and guys just get cut because they've just reached uh, their best before date. So. I see the commenters are having a party in the comment section amongst themselves, so that's good. Uh, I encourage that. Uh, by the way, coming up before this hour is over, we will award our $50 gift card from Taco Time for the comment of the week. It's already been designated, unless we have something that knocks our socks off in the next little while. And James Duffy coming up as well. Uh, Sandusky, Ohio, watching on YouTube, says, is the Hamilton coach headed to Washington? That is the rumor that Orlando Steinauer is coaching his last game on Sunday with the Hamilton Tiger Cats, and he will be named the defensive coordinator of the Washington Huskies of the NCAA next week. 
but for whatever reason, they don't want to talk about that, that at Grey Cup week. Uh, I will just say th things have changed, Dave, from our time. Listen to us two gray and white beards sitting here. Uh, this used to be what Grey Cup week was all about. The rumors, the chutzpah, the hubba, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't seem to be that way anymore. So that's fine. Time has passed us by. To the National Hockey League, I, all I'm seeing, by the way, on this Coyotes thing or from the NHL Board of Governors meetings in South Florida here is about the Coyotes thing. And Gary Bettman saying, no, no, everything's fine. The bills are paid. Coyotes aren't moving, which none of that should surprise any of us. I've seen nothing about the NHL pulling out of the Olympics in Beijing. So maybe in the next little while, if somebody wants to send me a link to that, um, we'll discuss it if it comes up. But I've seen nothing. It's not on Darren Dreger's Twitter feed, and he's down here. Dave, uh, to the Jets, they've slipped out of a playoff position in that central division, or at least the last I looked they had. You said all the focus in Manitoba is on the Bombers. Is that a fact? Have people not noticed that the Jets have been struggling lately, save for last night's win in Seattle 3 nothing. Last night's win in Seattle was absolutely tremendous. But just before I get into the Jets, don't you wish you had like women in your life that were so loyal to you, like Gary Bettman is loyal to the Coyotes? Like it's it just it's crazy how the 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 the, the, the stuff that's gone on in Arizona, and they you know they're not moving. Like like I don't know. Like you know, just move that franchise already. Get rid of them. Uh, back to the Winnipeg Jets. Um, yeah, the Jets had some tremendous success early on in the season, and they were looking, and the parade, the parade was being planned. And then uh, you know, you dropped a couple of we dropped a couple of tough games, and uh, of course the uh, proverbial uh, change the uniforms, burn the building, fire the coach, fire Kevin Shev Shovel Day off, everything. You know, move the franchise. Those guys came out again, and then they put together a couple of big wins, including a six three drubbing of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Sorry, dupes, and then. Uh, and then, then in Carolina, they, 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 they held in tight for most of the game with Carolina, and Carolina pulled ahead 1-4-2. to two. Now, Carolina is one of the top teams in the league, and there's no real reason to hang your head in shame when you drop one game like that to Carolina. So the, I think the game yesterday in Seattle was very important just to kind of get people calm. Um, you know, but now, you know, you go into Vancouver, and Vancouver is an unknown franchise. you got Bruce Boudreau behind the bench. You got all kinds of guys in there in the back planning and scheming, and the players are probably happy because that was a bad regime over there. So you don't know what you're going to get. So I think you're going to have another tough game. Then you got a, I think we have a four game home stand uh, in amongst um, in, in the next couple of weeks, including one game against Buffalo. So you should be able to to pull off a pretty good victory there. I think the Jets need a another seven to one win, or they need a couple like that just to kind of keep everybody in check. But you know, there's a, there's, they're a solid team. Um, anything can happen. I think that game against the Minnesota North Stars on Black Friday really ran rankled a lot of people bad. Um, you know, they came back and they were able to beat Calgary the next night. But I think that really sits, sits tough with people because, you know, Minnesota and Colorado, those are the teams that are on top of the, uh, the division that with the Jets are in. So people are going to get really nervous when you can't beat Minnesota that probably means you're not going to go very far in the playoffs if you can't solve the wild. So, Well, nobody has solved the wild, but I'm looking at this right now, and the Jets with the win last night in Seattle have pulled into a tie with Colorado for that last spot in the Central, but they each have 30 points, and they're going opposite ways, really. Colorado's really gotten hot, especially with McKinnon coming back. But that's the interesting thing. Like, it's with whether it's the Oilers or my Dallas Cowboys, I say, as long as you're in a playoff spot, let's just chill and f tinker our game until we get to the playoffs. But if the Jets start flirting below the playoff line, Dave, then I think it is legitimate reason to panic. But they're a good enough team, aren't they? I mean, losing Mason Appleton in the expansion draft isn't what's killed the Jets. They've augmented their blue line, right, with Brennan Dillon and Nate Schmidt in the off. Like, they probably should be better, but they are 13-9-4. and four. Do you think they should be better? Yeah, I think they should be better. Um, and, and I think that well, glaring, uh, his absence was glaring, was Neil Pionk uh, against the Carolina Hurricanes. I think that uh, the Jets didn't adjust well to him not being in the lineup. I think he's, he's one of those unsung heroes that fly, flies under the radar. Uh, he's a solid defenseman, solid on the power play, and uh, I think the Jets really missed him. I, I believe that, uh, I know that he's not going to be in the lineup for tonight uh, just because of the two-game suspension and in concussion protocol but he's a solid defenseman. 
I think, uh, you know, I, I really think this team just needs to get hot and stay hot and not, um, and not, we've, they've had a little bit of a um, speed bump again with Mark Shifley and Blake Wheeler having some extended time out of the lineup. And then Paul Stasny being out of the lineup due to injury and now with Keonk being suspended. So once I think that the, 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 the core team is back together and they put some wins under their belt, you know, they, they, they're not, I don't know if we can catch Minnesota, but you can hang in there and you go neck and neck with them. And then, uh, then the playoffs come and that's a whole different situation. Well, I had Colorado one, Winnipeg two, Minnesota three in that division. It may still end up being that way, but it's nowhere near that right now. Um, just before we go back to football, we have some CFL Grey Cup news here. Plus, I want your Vikings take, and I'm going to talk a little college ball for a second. But just out of sheer curiosity, I had Hustler on here yesterday, and I said, how often does the topic, the word Winnipeg Ice, come up in your world? And Hustler said, like, every day. And Wednesday night, he went to the Edmonton-Winnipeg game, top two junior teams in the country. Just in your world, David, how much do you hear about the Winnipeg Ice, the number one team in all of Canadian junior hockey? Well, of course, in the last two weeks, they've t- taken a back seat to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and the Winnipeg Jets. But prior to that, when the season first started, they got off to that red hot start. You heard a lot about them. You heard, in fact, um, when I say that, you know, it, it, right now it's Blue Bombers number one, Winnipeg Jets number two, and Winnipeg Ace number three. Manitoba Moose don't even fit into the conversation. And um, mm-hmm. once, and once uh, the, the uh, CFL, the Great Cup gets played to, um, on Sunday, uh, you can see it'd be Winnipeg. Jets and then Winnipeg Ice could be one and two in the conversation. The um, just on on that note though, um, the Ice they they get tremendous crowds playing in that small building. There's still no word on when they're building their own building. But the Manitoba Moose and the Winnipeg Jets have been working really hard to get fans into the building with some tremendous giveaways. They you know one of the promotions the Winnipeg Jets ran on Black Friday was get two tickets and two jerseys for two hundred and twenty two dollars. And um, you get to pick the game there. There were all the 300-level tickets, but that's like a $600 value. The price tag on the jersey that I got was $199 before tax. Uh, the moose, it was get a moose game, pick a moose game, get a hoodie for $45. So both teams have work, are working harder than they ever had to to kind of keep relevant in the marketplace. But, uh, you know, the Winnipeg Ice, they just keep chugging along. And, uh, you know, it's such a great brand of hockey. Like, I've been to um, ice games. I've been to Saskatoon Blades games. I've been to Calgary Hitman games. And, uh, but I think in terms of the pure hockey product, I've never seen it better uh, with the Winnipeg Ice put on the, on the ice. Well, I just imagine this. Florida Panthers games, you can get four tickets for $199. Drink for each, popcorn for each, hot dog for each, and an Alexander Barkov jersey for $199 for a National Hockey League game. Uh, oh, by the way, that. from Grey Cup, Hamilton, Hamilton defensive lineman Ted Laurent is a question mark for Sunday's Grey Cup after missing practice Friday for the second straight day through illness. Coach Orlando Steinauer told reporters after practice, I'm totally waiting on the medical reports. We're going to exhaust anything we can to let Teddy play. Steinauer said the illness was not COVID related. Just a take on your beloved Minnesota Vikings. They won on Thursday night football, but almost blew. What was it? A 29 nothing lead. Has this been the zaniest year of Minnesota Vikings football? in your memory they could still make the playoffs yet they lose to the detroit lions last week i think the only uh good thing about losing the detroit lions was i was on a bus to the uh winnipeg blue bomber game uh and i didn't get to see that debacle because that probably would have ruined other than just checking the app and saying that they lost but that was a terrible game and then um i never seen anything like that last night too like there's that game was so comfortably um it, it, they, were, they had such a comfortable lead. I was back and forth between the Jets game and the Vikings game. Vikings game went to halftime. Um, I, I watched the Jets game, and then I, I went back. When I went back to the Minnesota Vikings game, there were five minutes have gone by in the third quarter, and the Steelers had already scored two touchdowns. And, uh, and then you had that sinking feeling that this was going to happen again. Like You're just like, uh-oh. And I, and I text a buddy of mine all the time, and we joke around with a lot of stuff when even when the Jets are behind one goal or when Connor Hellebuck lets in a soft one, we text each other, doom, just doom. And then, and then it was just watching the Vikings game going, doom, with like an exclamation point. And then uh, they barely ha- hung on. It was just uh, like this, an incomplete pass in the end zone with no time left, saved the game. Now, we don't know if they would have been able to do the two-point convert 
to uh, to to win and or sorry, to send the game into overtime. But we don't know. There's a lot of unknowns there. But it never should have got there. Like it was, it was ridiculous. Well, they could be they could make the playoffs or they could fire the coach. Welcome to Minnesota Vikings football. We're over time. We've got to roll. <laughs> David, thanks for joining us, man. Good luck on Sunday. Enjoy the game. Go Bombers. <laughs> We're going to Grey Cup after this break with TSN's James Duffy. Stick around. You're watching the RP Show. Daytime sports talk on the Game Plus television network. YouTube live streaming. 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. You got to subscribe. Click the subscribe button for all the content you may have missed. Don't rack your brain trying to source the equipment and materials you need for your business. Rockstar can operate your entire supply chain, from PO creation to expediting your shipments, all from our office. Leverage the buying power of the Rockstar Buying Group to not only save money and time, but also the headache. From gloves to glue, we can provide it for you. Find out more at rockstar.com. A Landmark Cinema's $30 gift card with 40 bucks in great movie savings is the perfect gift to give or give to yourself. Get yours today in theater or online at LandmarkCinemas.com and make it a merry movie season. Landmark Cinemas for movie lovers. In the heat of the summer, heat of the summer, the familiar sound. It's a sound feel in the air. It's the best thing anywhere. Just give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. BetRegal.net, exclusive sports gaming partner of the CFL. Comfort has always been something we, as people, strive for. It means that the places we live and work, and that the people we care most about, are able to go about their lives focusing on the things that matter. Our focus at Flame Tech has remained the same for more than 20 years. Now more than ever, we need each other to support our local businesses. As an industry leader in combustion services, we are proud to attend to the needs of our communities and support the local economy. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. BDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Flame Tech Football Friday continues. Flame Tech locally owned and operated industry leaders in commercial and industrial combustion technology. That campus right there will be the site of the Boca Raton Bowl coming up on December the 18th, featuring Appalachian State in Western Kentucky. But we're going to Hamilton now for the Canadian Bowl, the Grey Cup, the 108th CFL Championship will be played at Tim Hortons Field on Sunday. We welcome in James Duffy, whom we've thoroughly enjoyed. 
West Division playoff coverage the last couple of weeks down here. How you doing, James? I appreciate the time, sir. Good, partner. I'm doing well. I just want you to know uh, the level of care that I have for your show. Uh, what I put into uh, setting up this shot here, because I don't have a computer, I only have my phone. So I'm in my uh, hotel room here in Hamilton. I, I, I'm going to show you this, uh, what I've done here. I've, I've taken the, uh, the recycling box uh, with my empty smoothie in it, and I've taken the coffee maker and placed it in front of the recycling box uh, to form a tripod for my phone. There you go. How about now, that? So now it's going to be crooked. I'm never going to get it back. Never going to get it back. It is the Hamilton Sheraton, if I'm correct. Hamilton Sheraton. I've stayed there many, many times. Am I right? That's right. You are correct. <laughs> you are correct. Marriott Point. Right, right on King Street. Great Starbucks in there. Wonderful people. James, what is the um, Grey Cup report from you, from your vantage point? What's, what's the vibe? Well, this is one of those questions I don't want to answer dishonestly uh, because sometimes it happens to me when I, you know, I come to Super Bowl week and I'm just there the first day. I've only been in my hotel and people ask me what the vibe is like on the streets. And I, I say, oh, it's electric when I really haven't seen anything. And sort of same deal here, Rob, where I, I was here on Wednesday to interview the coaches, had to, had to go back to Toronto to do some, uh, to do Leafs. And so I just, I got in late last night and haven't left my hotel room as I look at this five-hour pregame show. So I have a limited feeling of atmosphere right now, uh, but I tend to get out in the town a little bit tonight. And I mean, I think, look, Hamilton's a great, great football town. And I think they're super, super pumped, you know, just in driving in and going out of the lobby today, the tons of uh, Ticats jerseys that are around here. So it's it's remarkable in a way that it's an hour down the road for Toronto when it's so hard to feel that buzz. But Hamilton's a really good football town. Um, I'm glad they're hosting this because it just adds a little bit to the game and maybe equalizes a situation where I think Winnipeg's a better football team. So uh, it's a little different with COVID. There's not as many events. There is an award show tonight, but there is Spirit of Edmonton, which you know so well, but not as many parties as there usually is in a Grey Cup week. But I'm just glad we're here and we have an actual game to play because I was worried about that well, you know what, in the off season. Weren't we all? But, you know, as an Ottawa guy, you're the perfect guy to ask this. You've done World Junior Stanley Cup Finals. A lot of events I probably haven't even won't list here. The Grey Cup is right there with all of them, isn't it? It really is. 100%. 100% and I, I'm fortunate enough to cover Super Bowls every year. And I will tell everyone uh, that I prefer Grey Cup week 10 times to Super Bowl week. And I'm not one of these. I love all football. I love the CFL. I love the NFL. Grey Cup week is just, Super Bowl week. You know, it's all these exclusive parties. And uh, it, I don't know. It's just there's a it's so it's such a Canadian thing. Grey Cup week where you see the same people and uh I don't know. To me, it, it's just, it's an ultimate Canadian celebration. And, and like I said, even if I was, once I'm done covering these as a fan, I'd much rather go to Grey Cup week than the Super Bowl week. What would, dumb question maybe, but I guess, did it save Grey Cup that Hamilton's in it? Could you imagine if the Argos were there? How big of a difference would it have made? I don't know that it saved it, but I think it really helps. Uh, you know, we always look at it selfishly from just the television standpoint and from the TSN standpoint. and. I, I'm I'm always neutral on everything. Uh, I just want a good game, right? And we want people still watching in the fourth quarter. And just from a fan perspective and from a league perspective, you just you want it to be entertaining and you want it to be close. And I, I think first of all, you know, it was going to sell out anyway. But there's always a better vibe when when the home team is in it. I think I, I think it's just always that extra little edge to it. And as I've said before, it, it gives Hamilton a little something here. Uh, which I think they need against a, a really good Winnipeg team. The uh, broadcast will be on ESPN2 in America, but I'll be watching as much of the five-hour pregame as I can on TSN. James, I saw your eyes just go. Did it go to your phone? Did you just get the notification that I did? Gary Bettman says Olympic participation amongst NHLers will be left up to the players out of the meetings here in South Florida. I got to get your take on that, if you don't mind. Um, 
it's up to the players if they go to Beijing. Is this going to be a real grease fire between now and February or an easy decision for the players to make, do you think? I don't think it, it, it's going to be an easy one. Uh, I am the biggest fan of watching NHL players in the Olympic Games. I think it was mistakes in the past, the times they have not gone. I've always argued with Gary Bettman. I usually only get to see him a couple of times a year. I always get to see him backstage at the Hockey Hall of Fame. And we've had some intense discussions about that when the NHL did not want to go because I think it's you know, the best hockey we ever see. Having said that, I did really understand the league standpoint this year. If there was ever a time not to go after you've had two straight seasons interrupted by COVID from a pure business standpoint, you know, to get a season over with at a decent time, not have it go into mid July. And the fact that it's in Beijing and it's a long way to go. And there's all these questions with COVID. If there was ever a time I could have understood the league not wanting to go, it would be now. And back to your question, I think there are players as this the new variant spreads that are, are going to be worried and there's questions you know if someone does test positive over there they have to quarantine for a couple of weeks after which would wreak havoc into the nhl schedule so i'm sure there are prominent players who have hesitation robin leonard already said he's not going um but i still think the majority look at we're let's face it we're going to the olympics the players will go for one reason for the you know the nathan mckinnons and the and the Austin Matthews and Connor McDavid's who haven't had this opportunity yet. And, and so I hope they go. I want to watch it. I uh, hope to be involved in the coverage of it. But I will understand if things get progressively worse over these next couple of weeks if, if they elect in the end not to go. Wonderful answer. Uh, James, if I may, this, this great cup, the playoff work has been some of your finest. I've really enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as it looks. I'll be watching Sunday, and thanks for fitting us in today. I know you're a busy guy. Uh, it was great to get to Sasky uh, for the semis. I would have, uh, you know, I, I, that was a tough one, that game, because from a TSN standpoint, it's always great since when Saskatchewan makes the Great Cup because we know we have uh, there's more CFL fans and more eyes tuning in than Saskatchewan than anywhere else, but Winnipeg's a really good football team, so I hope we have a terrific game, and I appreciate the kind words, buddy. All right, bud. James Duffy from TSN, the CFL on TSN host, joining us from the Hammer. When we come back, Taco Time viewer takeover will award our gift card for the comment of the week. Got a sports update and uh, so much more. We'll be right back for the final segment of the week in overtime. You're watching the RP Show on the Game Plus Television Network. YouTube live streaming and 24-hour sports radio at rodpeterson.com. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. You might not be injured if you slip and fall. Or you might sprain your wrist, or even fracture it. A severe wrist fracture can take at least two months to heal properly. And it can cause you to develop arthritis that keeps you from doing something as simple as picking up your child without pain. Slips, trips, and falls can have a lifetime impact. Take safer steps with WorkSafeSask.ca. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445.
addiction. It destroys relationships, families, and lives. It makes individuals and the people who love them feel powerless. But the good news is that addiction is a treatable illness. At Aurora Recovery Center, we provide everything you need to build a solid foundation for your recovery with holistic evidence-based treatment tailored to each individual. Located in Gimli, Manitoba on the shores of Lake Winnipeg, Aurora can help regardless of whether or not you feel ready or have tried before. Aurora Recovery Center, recovery for life. Visit auroracoverycenter.com for more information today. Hey, Don. Hey, Quinn. We have a surprise for you. Oh, my. <laughs> Hey, Rod Squad, now you can join the team with your very own RP Show gear. Head to rodpetersonshop.com and get yours today while supplies last. It's just like we wear on the show, official RP Show gear at rodpetersonshop.com. It is overtime, everybody, proudly presented by the Four Seasons Sports Palace, your home for the UFC, the National Hockey League, and the Seattle Kraken fan club all right uh the moose is with us we got a lot of business to do here moose in the break or in this segment sorry if we can bring him in on camera i thought he was i thought he was gone you, you i did sneaky too little devil you, but i just thought you know what you stuck I'm here, around i'm here for you i had a couple of really good meetings and uh yeah so slide back in if you got to take care of business i'll love to here. hear it um it's okay i'll take care of business uh first of all we're going to award the taco time comment of the week and to be honest with you five weeks ago we started doing this and i told darren i was not fond of him throwing me under the bus making me decide the winning <laughs> comment but you know what it hasn't been that bad Good. and i don't know if we have the comment ready clark do you have it or you may put it up in the comments it is from stacy champagne way back on monday and he snuck it in just under the wire he watches daily from access television world headquarters do you have it the comment by chance you knew we were going to do this. Here, it, incoming, coming in hot, Clark says. Man, this is riveting television. <laughs> uh, but it's not coming on the screen. Okay. The winner of the Taco Time gift card, $50 from Stacy Champagne. There it is. And there it goes. Like a good taco from Taco Time, the riders unfortunately fell apart. And uh, I'll do it. Put um bum. Fifty dollar gift card will be going out to Stacy Champagne from Access Television. Over we go to Landmark Cinemas Moose. The Landmark Cinemas Buy Thirty Get Thirty event is back and better than ever. This year, get $40 in great movie-going savings when you buy $30 in gift cards. It's the perfect gift to give or gift to yourself. Get yours today in theater or at LandmarkCinemas.com. And uh, so you guys can get ready for it. The business of the week is coming up, but I'm not going to do it right now. Let's give them a minute to get ready for them, Moose. The breaking news that just came down from the NHL Board of Governors meetings in South Florida, Gary Bettman saying that it will be up to the players whether they want to go to the Beijing Olympics or not. And I just read the story courtesy the score.com. Gary Bettman saying that uh, more and more players have expressed concern over COVID-19 restrictions and so forth. And it just sounds like the, the players don't want to go to the Beijing games. Um, I, I Big picture. I think it's awesome if they do leave it up to the players. Is that buck? Is that passing the buck? Is that taking the easy way out if you're the owners and Gary Bettman, or is this the like humane thing to do? Um, I think it's the right thing to do. I think the league has kind of said, and, and they've made their agreement to let the players go. They've created the break in the schedule for the Olympics. They've done all the things. Um, the league can't make the players go. I don't think now. Um, but the league, I don't think they want to say, tell the players they can't go. You've built in this Olympic break. You've decided that it's okay. Now, I think the Players Association could maybe make that decision as a group. 
Well, you know, when they meet, they could decide, hey, as a group, we're deciding if we're all going or we're not going. Or the group as an association can say, okay, what do you guys want? Do you want to leave it up to each person individually? At the end of the day, if a player doesn't want to go to the Olympics, they won't go. But, uh, no, I think that's right. I think it's it's a nice way to keep a, a good relationship with the players to say, look, it, we'll let you guys – you guys do what's best for you as a group. And uh, we're here to say, look, it, we, we still support you if you want to go to the Olympics. I like it. Big fan 2019 on YouTube. I think that's John in Edmonton watching says, I think that the NHL is leaving it up to the players is the right thing to do. John goes on to say, anyone trying to buy world junior tickets via Ticketmaster, guess what? Ticketmaster's down. I actually discovered that this morning and I was looking for orange bowl tickets. Most the Ticketmaster's down. I don't know if you saw this earlier. I mentioned $450 is the starting price for tickets to the Capital One Orange Bowl, okay. New Year's oh, Eve. No. So I'll be looking... Yeah, buddy. I'll be looking for media accreditation to the Capital One Orange Bowl. Yes. How about that? Please do. How about uh, that? Fail, failing that, I may buy a ticket. We'll see. The MySAS 411 Business of the Week for our friends at Direct West is the Honey Bun Cafe. The Honey Bun Cafe is our MySask 411 Business of the Week. They're a locally owned breakfast and lunch eatery that specializes in warm, fresh stuffed buns uh. with a variety of fillings. From pulled pork to caramelized onion to a breakfast bun or fluffy cinnamon bun, Honey Bun feeds all the hungry downtown Saskatoon crowds. Find them at MySask 411 today. Download it I to your smartphone, place. the MySask 411 app. Oh, yeah. Listen, you're going to be checking that out as you head to Saskatoon to broadcast the Rush game on Saturday night. The uh, home opener, Moose, as we can bring uh, Moose back in here. We should do. So, yeah, my SAS 411 business of the week is the Honey Bun Cafe. Let's get a plug in there for the Saskatchewan Rush. Yes. Big weekend for you. Last minute of play. Last minute of play in the RP show. It's going to be awesome. Uh, The Rush home opener, Teddy Bear Toss Night at the Rush game, too. So that's really cool. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. We're doing a special pregame show called the Rush Hour Pregame. I'll be hosting that. Um, Cody, Sabine, it's going to be awesome. And then uh, the game afterwards. So uh, it will be so much fun uh, as we get the Rush season started. So I'll be in Saskatoon first thing in the morning after the Pats game tonight. Oh, man, you're the busiest guy in show business. Hey, rock star of the day on Thursday was Hustler Patterson of Winnipeg Sports Talk today. Eddie Steele, James Duffy, and the Sports Doctor are your options. Rockstar Supply Chain Solutions, they specialize in improving your company's performance and bottom line through supply chain management services. Have a great weekend, everybody. Enjoy the Great Cup. We'll be back to talk about it right here, noon Eastern, Monday on Game Plus. You screwed up, Clark. Oh, no. How about that? Bob's your uncle. Let's go. Right on. LFG. Bingo. Approved. Spicy. Oh no! Hot take! Awesome! How about that?